Welcome back, everyone. Toys is here, and I am back yet again for yet another McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse video. Today, we're headed to Target to check out a brand new gold label two pack featuring two characters, one of which I have been asking for. It's a fairly new character, but they finally made a figure of him, so I'm happy to say that I have Mr. Bloom, and they threw in a rookie inside this two pack there he is looking all jim gordon-y but really i'm all about this guy so i'm stoked to check him out now this specific set is from the storyline super heavy after end game with the whole batman versus joker and the dionysium and the whole just it's dumb just dumb but they make for cool characters as action figures we'll say that at the very least so Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new McFarlane Toys Target Gold Label 2-Pack exclusive from the storyline, well, the tail end of it, end game, all the way through to Super Heavy. We have Mr. Bloom and the Rookie Robot. And so now here's everything taken out of the packaging. And I knew what I was getting, I can clearly see. But for $70, I'm gonna save you some time here. There's not enough in this box to justify $70. You get a stand. Thanks for putting that in there. That's so nice. It's nicely sculpted, I, I guess, it, yay. It's one of those like, okay, I'm glad you threw it in there. It has a little bit of a wash to it. It has pegs, so you can kind of sort of stand the characters on there. But it's more along the lines of like, yeah, thanks for putting that in there. Maybe extra hands, and we'll get into that in just a few. You do get an extra head portrait, Jim Gordon, as the rookie robot, he's all saddled in, ready to go. Again, the head portrait is really cool, except that he is just a pegged in head. It has no mobility to it, and that's unfortunate, because it's a really well done, well painted head portrait. But wouldn't it have been cool to have the neck piece, have it on a ball joint, and then be able to use the other Jim Gordon as Batman head portraits and be able to kind of swip swap all of them? That would have been more ideal, at least to me. And it just simply pegs in, which sure, that totally works, but it just swivels, that's all. It looks left, looks right, it doesn't go up and down, there's no movement to it, unlike the actual Rookie Robot head portrait. You can move Jim Gordon around freely, but I always thought that was kind of weird. It's like, how does he actually fit inside this robot? It's like Tony Stark inside the Hulkbuster. You'd be breaking bones and being ripped limb from limb. As I said with the prior released Jim Gordon is Batman, here's the other thing. The head portrait for the Rookie Robot is smaller than the seven inch Jim Gordon head portrait that you see on the actual Batman figure. So again, that to me is something that should be paid attention to. It's weird that it would be a smaller head portrait because it's just odd. If everything, and we know it's not supposed to, well, it's supposed to be in scale, but we know how scale goes with the DC multiverse. It's more so paying attention. Right? That's what I want to see. You have a rookie robot here, and for the most part, it's really well done, but doesn't offer anything new in juxtaposition of what Mattel has done in the past with their Build-A-Figure. You have the big ears. Some of them are warped in the box inside the package in the store, so just get yourself a good looking one. This robot looks more like Chappie. He has the big old shoulder rocket launcher pads. That would have been cool to maybe have some kind of rocket effects, something to put in there, something. I'm not looking for spring-loaded, God forbid we ever got that. But that would have been a nice touch. You have the bat symbol, you have the head portrait, again, which will pop in and out. It's very easy. It's in there, but it's also very easy to take out. But that at least has some extra rotation, unlike the Jim Gordon head portraits. It's nicely done. It's a good head portrait for just a screen, basically. But like I said, it is simply just swap and it's kind of sort of in there. It doesn't really attach well, if I'm being honest. Now, you do get plenty of articulation in the arms. The big old shoulder cannons don't get in the way. He's got bicep. He does have double jointed elbows, but they're really only single jointed because of all the armor, those kind of knock into one another. He has these big old sort of shieldy pieces on the sides of both of his arms. And yes, you can move the fisted hands, 
but not much. And that's where some extra hands for this robot really would have done a great job in thoroughly bringing him to life because it's really just, well, he just punches things and that's it. It would have been nice. Yes, the arms will go up. They're not hindered by the big old shoulders. So again, that's totally fine. That totally works. He's got plenty of momentum in the upper diaphragm and the waist. That's not a problem at all. Now more towards the waist, he has a little bit more paint going on. He has a vinyl skirt piece that wraps around. It doesn't hinder the legs, but I like that there is some paint. There's some GCPD logos. You got the blue and the red lights to symbolize, obviously, the police. The main problem with this rookie robot, though, is that at least on mine, the legs are very loose and the legs will say are stiff enough to OK, fine. That's I mean, they're a little bit looser than I would like, but it's the feet that are just totally the, the element that makes him fall over every two seconds. They're not ratcheted. They're entirely too loose for a brand new figure. And my figure, this rookie robot, keeps going tumbling no matter what. I put him on the black stands, I put him on the base. In either case, you stand him, you get him going for at least a little bit, but slowly but surely, he'll either fall forward, fall backward, and because he's huge, he'll take everything with him. So yes, he does have peg holes, but again, like I said, on my rookie robot, it's entirely too loose, and it is something we have seen over and over and over again with McFarlane Toys. Like I said, and I'll reiterate, $70 for this is entirely too much for what you're not getting in the box for these specific characters. Mr. Bloom, for me at least, is the star of the show because I feel like the Mattel rookie robot is definitely better than this one. Mr. Bloom, however, and yes, fully admitting, I'm gonna be a little bit biased here because I have been waiting for this figure, looks a lot better in hand. He is supposed to be more of a Jack Skellington type, very spindly kind of guy. The body type they've chosen, while it's a little bit thicker than he should be, it's more on par. I'm glad they didn't go with a muscular body or an overly muscular body because that would have been weird. He has peggles on the bottom of his boots. His boots will simply just kind of rock. You're not going to get a heck of a lot of articulation in those, but you get the toes, the arms double jointed. I like the movement that this guy has. The hands are creepy, they're weird, but Mr. Bloom has a very specific element, that in the fishnets that are on his hands all the way up to his neck. As you can clearly see, he doesn't have those painted on fishnets, he doesn't have the sculpted on, nothing like that. So that's an element that I'm definitely missing, and as you can clearly see, he's supposed to be a lot thinner. I will totally admit that through and through, but I do like this figure for the most part, but they could have done so much more. Now, again, I like the hands, they're creepy, they're weird, but extra hands or more of his Mr. Fantastic kind of stretchy powers, something to add on would have gone that extra mile and for the price point would have been a whole heck of a lot better. Even on the mask, which I'm going to assume McFarlane really wanted to McFarlaneize this because in the element of the mask, the mask is just that, it's a mask. But when he gets all creepy, stretchy, that's when that flower on his face really starts to go haywire. So it's only at that point does the flower look like that. Is that a big hiccup? No, but it just shows me you're paying attention, but you're paying attention for all the wrong reasons, so to speak. So. That could have been a lot better, or an extra head portrait where the mask is just printed on and this is when he goes wild. But like I said, some extendo pieces to really get him growing, really make him creepy and weird, maybe an extender somewhere in the abdomen, the neck, something like that really would have elevated a character. And that can put a character like Mr. Bloom, who's kind of on the sidelines, go, wow, what is this action figure? I need to find out more about this character. And that elevates everything in terms of DC Comics. And that would have been so awesome. So in the future, I would like to see more of Mr. Bloom. He was a very interesting character. They did a little bit of something with him with the whole Task Force Z, where he was a zombie with other characters. And I don't know if that's really continuity, but he's interesting and he deserves a more interesting or at least a more on model to the comic books 
sort of action figure. However, when you pose these out, and like I said, my rookie robot is going slipping and sliding every two seconds. Mr. Bloom stands his ground. He looks good. They both look good together. If you have that extra Jim Gordon figure, blue or black, whichever one you picked up, he does look good with the rookie robot, either within the suits or as a partner. You get the idea. And the rookie, like I said, no joke, is a giant mega figure. So, yes, for the whole price tag of what you're assuming for this set, you're getting a giant figure, but... In case of mine, maybe it's not the same on yours. It's a very loosely jointed figure. And to see Mr. Bloom with some more classic Gotham villains, he fits in. He's definitely weird, but I like that it's one of the more modern characters, which I actually took a shine to. I wouldn't mind seeing this guy in Batman Cape Crusader, even though I really did not care for season one. Perhaps maybe season two, because it is a coming. Will do a lot better and because it's the dc multiverse you can have batman with mr bloom with the rookie robot it doesn't matter it's choose your own adventure choose how you display your figures everything and anything goes and that's part of the fun of these toys so that is going to wrap it up for my look at the brand new mcfarland toys the target gold label two-pack exclusive featuring mr bloom and the rookie robot both of them are in that vein of, well, it's five steps forward, maybe three steps back. Not as much. Mr. Bloom definitely needed more deco to him or more elements to really make him Mr. Bloom. So for that, I'm disappointed, but I am stoked that they made him into an action figure because I have been asking for that. The rookie robot, kind of leave it. I kind of like the Mattel one better. This one offers nothing in the case of new. You can't hold anything. There's no gun. There's no nothing. It's just swip swapping heads, and he's really tall. So you've heard my thoughts, and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything DC Multiverse, and I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, check out Mr. Bloom, read those stories, and definitely check out Task Force Z. I don't think you'll be disappointed. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.